heated debate, flaring tempers, impassioned pleas, unabashed advocacy. This description of deliberations on the floor of the United States Congress is not at all extraordinary. Not when issues are health care reform, gun control, fiscal cliffs, debt ceilings, chemical weapons, national security agency leaks, international terrorism, and resistance to school standards. The discussions are understandably emphatic in their arguments and determined in their efforts. What is extraordinary is that the same terms can be used to describe dissension in our household on any given Friday evening. Exhausted, after facing the challenges of their respective work weeks, my parents will usually suggest dinner out. After hauling my siblings and me into the family vehicle, our journey begins. We're in search of rest, relaxation, and family fellowship. Good food, good times. That's when things get a little interesting. Every member of my family has his or her own distinct palate and a singular focus when it comes to satisfying that palate. Sometimes that focus may result in an atmosphere akin to the United States Congress. Heated debate, flaring tempers, impassioned pleas, unabashed advocacy. In fact, one evening, we spent so much time debating restaurants and menus that every possible venue was closed by the time a decision was made. Fortunately, those occasions are rare. Now, what do these seemingly unrelated scenarios have in common? They are instances where in compromise, a settlement of differences through mutual concession leads to the attainment of greater good for the whole. Differences in opinion and perspective are not allowed to divide. Rather, they are used to traverse the sometimes tumultuous trial of opinions and interest, and ultimately to attain the greater good for the group, the whole. Understanding the commonality of these incidents, the next logical inquiry deals with their relevance to our duties and obligations as citizens to our government. I submit that they are relevant as examples of the importance and the imperative of compromise. I will also submit that compromise is an essential obligation of citizens, not only to each other, but to our government. Rear Admiral Barry C. Black, retired, has served as the 62nd chaplain of the United States Senate since 2003. He begins each meeting of the Senate with prayer. Prayer he has used to remind lawmakers of the urgency of compromise. Prior to and during the 2013 government shutdown, he petitioned God. Keep us from shackling ourselves with the chains of dysfunction. Deliver us from governing by crisis. Lord, lead them away from the unfortunate dialectic of us versus them as they strive to unite for the common good of this land we love. Democracy grinds to a halt without a willingness to compromise. For this reason, the topic I have chosen is compromise, the foundation of freedom, the imperative of citizenship. Compromise is essential in our world. The power of compromise, whether the issue is as complex as affordable health care or as simple as the best restaurant for a family dinner, manifests itself daily. Perhaps the greatest manifestation appears in our Constitution, a document referred to by some as a bundle of compromises. The 55 delegates who met in Philadelphia in 1787 were determined to limit the power of the government and to secure the liberties of citizens. Theirs was a goal to create a strong elected government directly responsive to the will of the people. The young nation faced many challenges, including a federal government at the mercy of state legislatures in matters of defense, public finance and trade, and a federation of 13 states that were, according to George Washington, united only by a rope of sand. Though united in their efforts to respond to those challenges, the framers of our Constitution were fierce advocates for their respective constituencies. Dissension at the convention became so great that it threatened the stronger union desired by those in attendance. After five weeks in session, the delegates were in deadlock that appeared insurmountable. Insistence by the larger states that congressional representation be based on population and insistence by the smaller states on a one state, one vote rule. The impasse was so great that Benjamin Franklin, according to James Madison's notes, appealed for divine intervention and assistance from heaven. It appears that heaven's response was a spirit of mutual concession. 
the act of compromise. You see, congressional representation was not the only item of contention between the southern and northern states at the Constitutional Convention that was resolved through compromise. There was also debate over taxation, the economy, the slave trade, and the election of the president. Through the power of compromise, namely the three-fifths compromise, delegates agreed to count slaves as three-fifths of a person when apportioning representation and taxation. The commerce compromise allowed government to tax imports but not exports. The slave trade compromise gave Congress the power to ban the slave trade after 1808. And the compromise on executive elections provided for the president to be indirectly elected by an electoral college to a four-year term of office. These compromises and numerous others make up the bundle of compromises that is our Constitution, a document embodying our founding fathers' declaration and intent to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and to secure the blessings of liberty to themselves and their posterity. Coming together was the first step. But the journey of those in Philadelphia required many steps beyond the first. Steps ordered by compromise. The framers of our Constitution understood that the freedoms it secured would only endure if beneficiaries took upon their shoulders the burden, no, the obligation, for maintaining them. James Wilson, who signed both the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States, declared, A good Constitution is the greatest blessing society can enjoy. It is the duty of every citizen to use his best and most unremitting endeavor for preserving it. On January 21st, 2013, in his second inaugural address, President Barack Obama affirmed that fidelity to our founding principles requires new responses to new challenges. Preserving our individual liberties ultimately requires collective action. As heirs to a more perfect union, justice, domestic tranquility, provisions for the common defense, promotion of the general welfare, and blessings of liberty, and as those charged with preserving and maintaining the Constitution of the United States, there is a clarion call, a legacy, a lesson for us, echoing from Independence Hall and from the steps of our nation's capital. That call, that legacy, that lesson, Compromise is our best and most unremitting endeavor. Compromise is the embodiment of collective action. In this great country of ours, there is constant debate over the issues of freedom and liberty, our rights as citizens and the preservation of those rights. From state houses to the White House, from state legislatures to the U.S. Congress, from state courts to the Supreme Court. So long as humanity is characterized by diversity, these debates will remain. So long as these debates remain, and so long as we desire the freedoms of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, compromise must remain a staple of our interactions. Is there a downside to compromise? There are those who argue that compromise, in any form, is merely a form of acquiescence, an attribute of those unwilling to stand up for what they believe is right or good. However, President Abraham Lincoln surmised, there are few things wholly evil or wholly good. Our freedoms, they're not free. Responsible, engaged citizenship that preserves the freedoms granted is the debt we owe, the irrefutable cost of the rights we enjoy. It is the debt we owe, not only to those with the courage to articulate our rights in 1787, amid all the chaos happening at the time, but also to those who even today fight to preserve and protect our freedoms at home and abroad, those who continue to fight for justice and equality for all. Compromise is the currency available to us as we endeavor to repay that debt. Compromise, the foundation of freedom, the imperative of citizenship. Thank you.